Well, I recently found that the bottled water that I've been drinking is one of the worst culprits for taking water from California, and it's also owned by Nestle. And I didn't know this, and I feel really bad that I had, I've been drinking this for so long. I, I feel really bad about it. I wasn't reading the fine print. You know, I'd look at some of their main things. Oh, uh, bottled uh, by the source just to the west of the Rockies. Oh, okay. Well. So then I wanted to look up uh, bottled water that isn't from California. And uh, I was having a hard time finding that. And then I saw this article, Stop Drinking Bottled Water. Oh, what's up with that? So went to this this article by Gizmodo stop drinking bottled water and they they go on about uh, talking about Nestle the Nestle CEO said he won't stop bottling water at the company's California plant not very far away from where people's wells are running dry in fact he could bottle more if he could he said because Americans just can't stop buying it and there's a whole bunch of stuff being said there and uh, one of the things they were talking about, I don't like the way my tap water tastes. And he goes, well, filters can help aer aer aerate water that's been sitting in your pipes to make it more palatable. Uh, you can also buy a fridge with a filter built in. Well, as far as I'm, I, even when I have the stuff that's filtered, I can usually still taste some of the, the chlorine, but, you know. Um, you know they, they talk about soda stream, if you like sparkling water. And uh, what about the big jugs of water in my office? Well, they may cut down on waste, but it's still bottled from the same companies you don't want to support. Isn't it really about plastic? Kind of. There's some chemicals in the plastic bottles. Uh, and it talks about uh, soda, iced tea, cold-pressed juice. What about emergencies? I read somewhere someone died from bacteria in the tap water. No, that's not true. And, and it's really, it's, <laughs> that's so rare in this country. And then, then the thing that kind of got to me was, uh, isn't bottled water better for you because it's filtered? And it said, in many ways, tap water is healthier because it contains fluoride, one of the great public health achievements of our lifetimes. And I'm just like, oh, oh, one of those again, oh. It's one thing to, to me, it's one thing to talk about how some studies have shown that drinking it can can reduce tooth decay. But when they sit there and say, one of the great public health achievements of our lifetimes, oh yeah. So I just started looking around at stuff and uh, uh, looked up fluorosis. Here it is on WebMD. Plenty of other places you can get information about this, how widespread is fluorosis, fluorosis causes, fluoride levels in drinking water, symptoms, treatments, prevention. It says, fluorosis is a cosmetic condition that affects the teeth. It's caused by overexposure to fluoride during the first eight years of life. This is the time when most permanent teeth are being formed. After the teeth come in, the teeth of those affected by fluorosis may appear mildly discolored. For instance, there may be a lacy white marking that only dentists can detect. In more severe cases, however, the teeth may have stains ranging from yellow to dark brown, surface irregularities, and pits that are highly noticeable. And uh, how widespread is fluorosis? Well, fluorosis first att attracted attention in the 20th century, the early 20th, early 20th century. Researchers were surprised by the high prevalence of what was called Colorado brown stain on the teeth of native-born residents of Colorado Springs. The stains were caused by high levels of fluoride in the local water supply. People with these stains also had an unusually high resistance to dental cavities. This sparked a movement to introduce fluoride into public water supplies at a level that could prevent cavities but without causing fluorosis. Fluorosis affects nearly one in every four Americans aged 6 to 49. It's the most prevalent in those ages between 12 to 15. The, the vast majority of cases are mild and only about 2% are considered moderate. Less than 1% are severe, but researchers have also observed that since the mid-1980s, the prevalence of fluorosis in children ages 12 to 15 has increased. 
Uh, although fluorosis is not a disease, its effects can be psychologically distressing and difficult to treat. Parental, parental vigilance can play an important role in preventing fluorosis. A major cause of fluorosis is the inappropriate use of fluoride-containing dental products such as toothpaste and mouth rinses. Sometimes children enjoy the taste of fluoridated toothpaste so much that they swallow it instead of spitting it out. But there are other causes of fluorosis. For example, taking a higher than prescribed amount of a fluoride supplement during the early childhood can cause it. So taking a fluoride supplement when fluoridated drinking water or fluoride fortified fruit juices and soft drinks already provide the right amount. And uh, so it's not a very serious thing, fluorosis. Uh, but I still wanted to do some more research. And so I tried looking up fluoride um, at, at research.google.com there were only two results and uh, there's this article that came up um, and uh, they had their cache of the article but it actually was from this site called uh, 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 Stephen uh, uh, Stephen and t t uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. T V E D T E N. Tvedin. Vedin. Tedin. And uh, talked about uh, integrated pest management. And if you look what integrated pest management is, it's uh, also known as integrated pest control. It's a broad based approach that integrates practices for economic control of pests. It aims to suppress uh, pet pest population is below economic injury level. And uh, so this guy wants to do it without using uh, potentially toxic chemicals. And uh, has a whole bunch of chapters on this. But uh, the one that was quoted in uh, research.google.com was pesticides are not pesticides. And so it leads to this chapter right here. And, uh, you know, this guy's concept is, you know, if it, if it is obvious that if we continually apply death to our living soils and water and air and yards and food and pests and children, death will start coming back to haunt us. Choose life and not death. And it just kind of, at first it kind of freaked me out. I was like, well, why is this showing up at research? .google.com. Well, it's because that's not, it's not scholar.google.com. <laughs> that's why. And uh, so when you search for fluoride, um, it has some uh, lovely information that you end up, if you look up some of, the, just almost any of the quotes from this, from this little section here, this whole section right here. Um, you'll find all these anti-fluoride uh, propaganda websites quoting this stuff. Or he says, the contents of one family size tube of fluoridated toothpaste has enough fluoride to kill a 25 pound child. Only one tenth of an ounce is required to kill a 100 pound adult. That is why fluoride is used as a poison by some pest control operators. There is no antidote. On Wednesday, July 2nd, 1997, the National Federation of Federal Employees, Local 2050, which consists of toxologists, chemicists, uh, chemists, biologists, and other professionals at EPA headquarters in Washington, D.C., voted unanimously to co-sponsor the California Safe Drinking Water Initiative that would reverse the state legislature's 95 law mandating fluoridation. <sighs> A statement from NFFE Local 2050 continues, Our members' review of the body evidence of evidence over the last 11 years, including animal and human epidem epidemiology studies, <laughs> indicate a casual link between fluoride, fluoridation, and cancer, genetic damages, neurological impairment, and bone pathology. Of particular concern are recent epidemiology studies linking fluoride exposure to lowered IQ in children. Well, you know, propaganda. So, um, 
here's one of the sites that that uh, pushes propaganda. And of course, it has, uh, has to have fluoride in the name. Yeah, uh, uh, fluoridealert.org. Yeah, that's that's going to be non-biased. That's not going to be very partisan. Oh, yeah, that's like uh, trying to get information about feminism from a website that has feminism in the name. Or feminist in the name. <laughs> Fluoride and IQ, the 43 studies. And they talk about all these studies that were done, you know. And uh, develop, uh, damage a child's developing brain. And quick facts about the 43 studies. And yes, here's something that they, they, you know, they actually admit here, but they don't admit some of the other things below this. Location of studies, China, India, Iran, and Mexico. And the thing they don't mention in this, in this uh, article is how these studies had really had to do with there were some chemical spills, there were some, some leakage, there were some things that were not supposed to be in, in the water, but they got in the water. This was not in the United States. These are in countries where some, some accidents happened. And uh, so, it, you know, and some of these places are talking about there being, here we go, uh, 2.0, uh, 2.1 to 3 .2, 2 .3, 2 .3, 2 .3, 2 .35, 2 .5, 2 .85, 2 .97, 3.1, 3.15, 3.94, and 4.12. Well, let's look at the, uh, uh, the HHS recommends 0 0.7 milligrams per liter. And these are talking about, you know, as high as 4.12. Yeah, um, that's way above the amounts. And yes, one could try to say that, um, well, that's not really that much more, and it's, it could be causing problems. Well, <sighs> you know, I mean, I'm still of the belief that we shouldn't put stuff in the water unless its, it's, the, it's purpose is to make it uh, safer to drink. And adding things in the water that... Uh, aren't necessarily for that. I, I still don't quite get the concept of that, but, you know, people will try to say that this cause, oh, look at these problems it's causing. Yeah, it's, well, it's just like uh, people trying to say that uh, vaccines cause autism or some shit. So, um, uh, one of the things that, that had come up is the, uh, how... You know, I, I was questioning why people were saying, you know, well, well, actually ingesting it, you know, it, 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 it can prevent this stuff from happening. And I'm going, ingesting it? Well, it's, it should be just topical, shouldn't it? So I, uh, I was looking up, I went to scholar.google.com and uh, looked up uh, ingesting fluoride topical versus systemic came up to this site, which led me to this article. Carey's Research. Carey's is uh, basically tooth decay, so it's tooth decay research. Uh, systemic versus topical fluoride. The abstract. The actual mechanism of fluoride action is still a subject of debate. A dogma, uh, a dogma has existed for many decades that fluoride has to be ingested and acts mainly pre-eruptively. That mean pre-eruptively, meaning before you know the teeth come out of you know through the gums. However, recent studies concerning the systemic effect of fluoride supplementation concluded that the caries preventative effect of fluoride is almost exclusively um, post-eruptive, after the teeth have come out through the gums. Moreover, epidemiologists have cast doubt on the validity of the old studies dealing with fluoride use. The concept of the post-eruptive fluoride effect is supported by in vitro and in, in situ investigations demonstrating that the mode of action of fluoride can be attributed mainly to its influence on demineralization and remineralization kinetics of dental hard tissues. Therefore, topical fluoride application in the form of fluoridated uh, dentrifices, which is basically you know toothpastes and other things that you use in your mouth to... Uh, to try to 
fend off tooth decay, should be encouraged. There are still important questions open that need to be answered despite, despite existing knowledge about the caries preventative effect of fluoride. So, existing information. Fluoride is still the cornerstone of modern non-invasive dental caries management. However, the actual mechanism of fluoride action remains the subject of debate. The belief that fluoride has to be ingested and acts pre preventatively by becoming incorporated into tooth mineral during its development originated from the early studies of Dean um, uh, and McKay. Uh, they were uh, done between, uh, some were done in 1942 and another in 1952. At this time, many clinical trials were designed to prove the pre eruptive systemic mode of action of fluoride. It could be demonstrated that the prevalence of overt uh, carious lesions in the permanent as well as in the primary dentition was lower in residents from areas with fluoridated drinking water compared to those living in non-fluoridated areas. And some of the, uh, one of the studies in 78, another in 1982, another in 1989, another in 1993. Additionally, laboratory analysis revealed that fluoride concentration in surface enamel was higher in teeth that developed under the influence of water fluoridation. Gathered uh, information gathered in 1989 and 1996. It was also found that the prenatal administration of fluoride supplements could reduce caries prevalence in uh, deciduous teeth. Uh, gathered in 1982. As early as 1955, Bibby compared the caries preventative efficiency of fluoride lozenges with fluoride pills in a group of 5 to 14 year old children. While the lozenges were sucked, the coated pills were swallowed before any of the contained fluoride would come in contact with the teeth. They were able to demonstrate that in the group using the lozenges, fewer carious lesions developed compared to the group using the pills. They concluded that the carious reduction produced by such lozenges was the result of fluoride acting on the external surfaces of the teeth. Uh, Lemke, in 1970, investig investigated the dental effects of discontinuation of controlled water fluoridation in Antigua, Wisconsin. They came to the conclusion that the caries inhibiting effect tends to persist as long as fluoride exposure is continued, but tends to be gradually lost after fluoride exposure is discontinued. It, they suggested that the periodic or continuous renewal of the fluoride content of tooth enamel is required to maintain the maximum caries inhibiting effect. However, these early indications of the post-eruptive effect of fluoride were neglected and the dogma of the pre eruptive mode of action of fluoride renamed, remained the basis of for fluoride research. In this context, Legueros, from 1985, performed physio physiochemical investigations of enamel from uh, deciduous teeth of a small number of children with and without prenatal fluoride supplementation. They found that enamel from children who were subjected to prenatal fluoridation exhibit more homogeneous and less extensive patterns of acid etching, denser crystal populations in, oh my, intraprismatic regions. I don't know what in, intraprismatic means, so I should have looked that up. Larger prism dimensions, greater total mineral dens density, a higher degree of, of uh, crystallinity, a smaller... A axis dimensions, more fluoride and less carbonate contents. These findings are always cited as evidence for the importance of systemic fluoridation. Fluoridation? Fluoridation. Hello. Although they have not been verified since, particularly not for permanent teeth. By the 1970s and 1980s, some doubts had emerged regarding the exclusively pre eruptive effect of fluoride. Primary teeth were protected against caries, even though prenatal incorporation of fluoride into e unerupted teeth was insignificant. So, there go. And additionally, a randomized double blind longitudinal st study testing the caries preventing effects of prenatal fluoride supplementation in children followed until age five 
failed to support the hypothesis that prenatal fluoride has a strong caries preventative effect. Helwig and uh, Klimek, 1985, found that children 12 to 16 years old, 12.5 to 16 years old, who had been exposed all their life to naturally fluoridated water exhibiting, exhibited significantly fewer carious lesions compared to a control group. However, they also found that even children who consumed fluoridated water for only two years showed a distinctly decreased DMFT score compared to the control children. Kunzel and Fischer, from 1997, analyzed the rise and fall of caries prevalence in two German towns and its relationship to changing, changing drinking water F concentrations. During the first three decades of the study, the caries pre uh, prevalence correlated strictly with the F concentration in the drinking water. Water fluoridation was followed by a caries decline, while interruptions in fluoridation were followed by increasing caries levels. However, since 1987, a significant caries decline occurred despite the fact that only poor water fluoridation was available. They concluded that one of the reasons might be the broader availability of other fluoride-containing products compensating for water fluoridation, like dentrifices, toothpastes, uh, mouth rinses, things like that. A similar result was reported by Koenig from 2001 for the Netherlands. From 1953 to 1973, drinking water in Teal was fluoridated, and consequently, consequently children aged 12 years had significantly lower caries pre prevalence if compared to children from a control town, namely Kullenborg. However, caries prevalence decreased gradually in both towns during the subsequent years, and by 1980, was in quite the same order for both towns. He concluded that there is no need for systemic fluoridation when topical fluoride application is available, um, as fluoridated uh, dentrifices. About 10 years later, Groneveld, uh, 1990, recalculated the teal Kullenborg data and came to the conclusion that there was some pre-eruptive fluoride effect, especially in the pits and fissures. However, Limeback questioned their estimates since they did not offer any error analysis. So, I mean, this this whole this, this, there's, there's a debate on this, and I'm sorry that was so long. I apologize for that, but I, I, I don't want to be told that I am not being thorough enough. So this video is going to be very long and boring. So... Um, let me see, what was this next thing that I was looking at here? Sorry about this. Now here are some sites. See, it's another site that's a fluoride debate. Well, has fluoride in the name, so it's probably going to be propaganda. But, uh... The chemicals used to fluoridate 90% of public drinking water are industrial-grade hazardous wastes captured in the air pollution control scrubber systems of the phosphate fertilizer industry. Well, does it matter where these chemicals are gathered? I mean, there are naturally occurring chemicals in organic things, in natural things that are highly toxic. There's some things that are, that are beneficial where the chemicals are gathered from, how they're derived, shouldn't really make that much difference. What makes a difference is how they affect the body. What are the studies that are done on the way they affect things? So, um, I was looking up sodium fluoride, I was looking up calcium fluoride, and looking at some of the differences. And when it comes to... Um, when it comes to calcium fluoride, when there's the calcium there, enough calcium, it's shown to not have much negative effects. But when it talk when it's when there isn't enough calcium, it can have negative effects. So let me see here. Where is this? Um Well, this site doesn't say it. 
Um, let's see here. So this is from water.epa.gov. How does fluoride get into my drinking water? Well, some fluoride compounds such as sodium fluoride and uh, fluorosilicates dissolve easily into groundwater as it moves through gaps and pore spaces between rocks. Most water supplies contain some naturally occurring fluoride. Fluoride also enters the drinking water in discharge from fertilizer or aluminum factories. Uh, also, many communities add fluoride to the drinking water to promote dental health. Now, see, this site, water.epa.gov, doesn't even go into what exactly is 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 being used. They're just saying fluoride, oh, fluoride, fluoride. And then they, they say sodium fluoride, such as sodium fluoride in this, but they don't actually talk about, you know, what gets added to the water. So... I tried looking up uh, calcium fluoride versus sodium fluoride versus hydrofluorosilicic uh, acid. Um, calcium fluoride it seems to be the, the 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 safest one, but the other ones, I mean, there's often enough calcium in the water already that the other methods don't cause a problem. Um, Now here's something from uh, ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. It's the uh, U.S. National Library of Medicine National Institutes of Health website. And uh, talking about the physio physiologic conditions that affect toxicity of ingested industrial fluoride. So... Uh, the effects of calcium ion and broad pH ranges on free fluoride ion aqueous, aqueous concentrations were measured directly and com computed th theoretically. Uh, solubil so how do you pronounce that? I know what it means, but sol solubil solubility. Okay. I would think it was solubil solubil whatever. Calculations <laughs> indicate that blood fluoride concentrations that occur in lethal poisonings would decrease calcium below prevailing levels. Acute lethal poisoning and also many of the chronic effects of fluoride involve alterations in the chemical activity of calcium by the fluoride ion. Natural calcium fluoride with low solubility and toxicity from ingestion is distinct from fully soluble toxic industrial fluorides. The toxicity of fluoride is determined by environmental conditions and the positive uh, cations. Why did it just move down when I click that? It's going to do that again? Okay, no. I need to look up this word. I don't know what this word means. Positively charged ion. Okay. At a pH typical of gastric juice, fluoride is largely protonated as hydrofluoric acid HF. Industrial fluoride ingested from treated water enters saliva at levels too low to affect dental caries. Blood levels during lifelong consumption can harm heart, bone, brain, and even developing teeth enamel. The widespread policy known as water fluoridation is discussed in light of these findings. So, <sighs> there, there is so much research to do on this. Still, there still needs to be more research done on this. The the current thought is still mixed on this. Uh, now, to me, if the primary way that calcium, uh, that calcium, that fluoride helps teeth is a topical application, 
then and and then why have it in the water supply? If the uh, If, if ingesting it is not really the primary way that it helps, then why put it in the water? I don't get that. Especially since, I mean, if there are families that can't afford toothpaste, they can't afford basic dental hygiene, then shouldn't we be trying to do what we can to help those that can't afford dental basic dental hygiene don't you think companies like crest and colgate and you know all these other companies that that most likely are under the same banner but you know whatever don't you think that they would be willing to to donate some things don't you think that we could put something together to make sure that everyone has access to dental hygiene why not do that instead of putting stuff in our water. I just, you know, if, if, it's, if the latest results are, are somewhat inconclusive as to whether or not ingesting it, uh, systemic uh, 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 use of fluoride, you know, if that's been inconclusive more lately versus what we previously thought, and we know that when it's topical, it works well. Again, why put it in the water? You know? So, um, I don't know if this video really said anything. It's a very long video. Um, and yes, I have the personal bias that that unless something is to make water safer to drink, that we shouldn't put stuff in it. I've already argued that before. And we can. And if you're going to sit there, it's one of the greatest achievements. Putting fluoride in the water is one of the greatest achievements. Then if you're going to spout that kind of shit, you know. I, you know, one of the greatest achievements in that area is fluoride toothpaste, dental products, stuff that we purposely put onto our teeth to help keep them healthy. That is more of a thing. That, it can, I, as these articles were showing, you know, the more prevalence of that uh, as compared to the fluoride in the water, that's the more more important thing. That's what we need to focus on, not uh, not continuing to put chemicals in the water that aren't necessary to help it keep make it safe to drink. So, and when I had tried making the argument before that. Uh, and I gave articles for this. I gave links to articles for this. And then people go, I'm not going to read that article. Your argument is stupid. I'm just like, well, you know, it's been proven that very tiny, tiny amounts of lithium naturally occurring in water in a number in, in places has been shown to decrease... Violent tendencies in the populace. So if that's the case, couldn't we argue in the same manner that we should put lithium in the water? That's a stupid argument. Well, you may not like the argument because you are so... I'm sorry, there are a number of people that when it comes to... Because I'm not rabid about this, this subject. You know, I prefer drinking water, bottled water, because I prefer the way it tastes, but... And I would prefer to not have extra chemicals in the water if they're not necessary, but I'm not going to be like, oh, no, it's going to hurt me. No, I'm not like that. I'm not one of those people. I'm not extreme on that. 
But to me, the people on the other side are just as rabid about the subject. Because if you even try to question any of it, how dare you question this? It's just like, come on, guys. Stop being so extreme. You know? No, no, it's one of the best achievements ever. You are extreme. If that's how you're getting about this subject, you are extreme. And you are not using the scientific method. You're just believing something and spouting it just because, well, that's the way, that's the, the common belief for a long time. Well, let's keep researching stuff. You know? I'm not one of these conspiracy theorists. So, just wanted to clarify a little bit. Again, this video is very long and I apologize for that, but sometimes it needs to be long in order to uh, make a point without people saying, you're, you're, you're just saying you're biased and you're just pushing propaganda and all this stuff. I'm trying to make sure I'm not pushing propaganda. So, hopefully this will video will get people to think a little bit and it will probably bore people quite a bit in the middle section of it. So, so sorry about that.